Hi guys and welcome back to Victoria's Creations. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you stick around and enjoy the tutorial. Today's project is going to be a grandparent sign that we are going to make using cute little bunnies and Dollar Tree signs. If you're ready to begin, join me at my crafting table. I'll go over everything you need and then we can get crafting. For today's project, you are going to need your cutting machine. I'm using my Cricut Explore Air 2, standard grip mat, permanent or removable vinyl. I'm using the permanent transfer tape, glue gun, glue stick, Cricut weeding tool, Cricut brayer tool, Cricut bright light, scissors, E6000, string, paint, signs, paintbrush, and your bunny rabbits. You will also need your grandparent SVG file. Now that we have all of our supplies, let's get crafting. Step one, prepping the bunnies. I purchased the bunnies from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of 10. I purchased a, quite a few packets of them, but just in case I run out, I do plan on taking one of the bunnies out of one of the packets and putting it up for a template. So that I can always make more in the future. To prep our bunnies, all we're going to do is paint them. We're going to paint them white. I'm not trying to do any kind of design. You can. That is completely up to you. I personally am just going to paint them white. I am using the chalk, calm decor chalk, cottage white. It is the ultra matte acrylic paint. I also bought this from Hobby Lobby and we're just going to give it one coat. See how the coat looks. If the coat, if it looks like it needs another coat, a second coat, then we'll apply a second coat. The reason why we're doing the bunnies first before we do anything else is to give it time to the paint to dry before it's time to add it to our sign. The paint can be drying while we're doing other things, so we're not just sitting here waiting for the paint to dry. I'm gonna give it a coat on the edges and on the front. I'm not gonna paint the back. These will be hung on the wall so you won't really see the back. Plus that's where the string is going to go to attach it, attach the bunnies to the, um, to the signs. Once the first coat dries completely, then I'll take a look at it and see if we need another coat. By the time I'm done painting, because I think I have 30 of them here, by the time I am done painting these, the first ones will be dry and I will be able to tell if it needs a second coat or not. You could definitely add vinyl to these if you wanted to do the face in a vinyl. I'm going to use vinyl to add the kids' names on them, all the grandbabies' names on them. You could even, if you are really good at painting, you could even paint out their names. I'm not that good at painting, so that will not be an option for me. You're going to repeat this process on all of your bunnies. Step two, get and prep your designs and create your names. To get your designs, go to victoriescreations.com, click on Victoria's Creations Vault, and enter the password. Your password can be found at the bottom of every email I send out. 
Once inside the vault, you will look for design 015, Grandparents Sign. Click on it and download it to your device. You'll notice when you open up your design, there are five different designs. Gigi's, Grams, Grannies, Mimi's, and Nannies. Open up Cricut Design Space and upload your designs to your canvas. Click on Upload, Upload Image, and Browse. Locate your files and click on the file you want to upload. Your Cricut Design Space already knows that it's an SVG, so you do not have to do anything but upload. If you'd like to work with another of the grandparent signs, you can click Upload Image again while you're still on this page. Click Browse again. Locate the design you want to use. I also want to use Grams. Click Open. Again, you don't have to do anything to it, but click Upload. To add them to your canvas, just click on each one. You'll notice that it now has a green box around it. You'll also notice that it is down here in the bottom. Click Add to Canvas. When they're added, you'll notice that they are together. Just click outside of the box and then select one. And you can move it around as needed. Before moving on, you want to make sure that you have your sizes correct on each one. To do this, you need to know what size area you are working with, so make sure that you measure out your signs. My sign is in width, just under 15 inches, and in height, it is 4 and 3 quarters. While I do not want my sign to fill up the entire space, or my words to fill up the entire space. I will not go for the full almost 15 inches. I would like to leave a little bit of space on all four sides. So I want to make sure that my image is not taller than four inches. So I'm going to change my height to four inches and you can either change it up top or you can change it by sliding back and forth on the square. I like to change mine up top because it's just a matter of putting in your measurements. You'll notice when we change the height that the width also changes. That is fine. Do the same thing to both. Once you have your signs done, now it is time to create your names. In order to create the grandchildren's names, you can do this right here in Cricut Design Space. Click on text. And your text box appears. Type in the name of the first grandchild that you would like to create. I like to move my names and my text over to the side so when I'm looking at the font, I can see the changes as they go. Remember that your words are going to be, or your names, are going to be very small. You want them no taller than an inch, but no wider than an inch and a half. Because again, you don't want to go from edge to edge. Make sure you are choosing a font that does not have thin letters. You also want to make sure that they're not too thick and if you have a hard time seeing the font once you uh, size it down, click on your zoom in button in the bottom left corner. For this project I will go with close to my heart, but I also want to make sure that the space in between is not, is not so big so I kind of just took it down to a negative point one. If you find that your letters are touching and you want them to still be a smooth cut and not cut in between, you can choose to unite the words or the letters, but you do not have to. If it goes a little above 1.5, it's not that big of a deal, but I like to try to keep it as close to 1.5 as I can. Now to do the rest of the names, you want to just go over to the top right hand corner where it says duplicate and you can duplicate these. Double click inside of it and add your next name. Repeat the process until you have all of your names, making sure that you check the size of each one for just in case.
Once you have all of your names in and you have them all sized exactly how you want it, the next thing you want to do is click on the save button, give it a quick name, You can add it to a collection if you want. I generally don't. I only save it really so that, one, I can come back to it, but two, if something happens, I have it. I don't have to redo it, and that saves me a lot of headache and aggravation if something were to happen. Step three, cut out your vinyl. Once your project is saved, click make sure you have the machine that you are using selected. I am using the Explore Air 2. Click Make It. Because my grandparents signed themselves are more than 11.5, it's going to automatically put me on one of the 12 by 20 formats, which is fine. Click OK to continue. This is where you get to kind of move things around to make it suit how you like it better. I don't like all of my names here bunched together because they're already small enough as it is. So I'm going to move some of these around to give me a little bit more space in between each name. I also want to make sure that I keep mine off of the edges just in case I don't have my vinyl lined up 100% when I put it on the mat. If you want to be able to turn your names, you have to zoom in so that these two pieces show up. Started to think that they took that option away from us. I'm glad to see it that that didn't happen. Once you have it layered the way you want it, you can zoom back out so you can see. You'll notice that, zoom back in, none, none of my words or text go below the 13 inch mark. So I need to make sure I have enough vinyl to at least cover that. I am going to lower that one some. And these two. I didn't realize that they were that close to the edge. And you notice they still it still does not go below the 13 inch mark. So I just need to make sure that I have enough vinyl to cover at least that. I want to go, I'm going to give myself just a little bit more space. So I'm going to make sure I have at least to the 14 inch mark. Once you have everything exactly how you want it, click off of your mat so that you can look at it. Make sure nothing is touching, none of the words are touching that way it doesn't cut into each other once you see that nothing is touching you can click continue because this is not iron on we're placing it our words directly on top of something you do not mirror make sure that your correct machine is selected choose your base material i am using the premium vinyl i like to select the more on the pressure make sure your blade is selected or is in clamp b nothing should be in clamp a load your mat and press the load button after putting your vinyl on your mat once you have that done it'll tell you to press go i never checked the fast mode i only i only just hit the load and then go button now it's time to put our vinyl on our mat and get cutting. Before I apply my vinyl, I am going to measure it out to make sure that I have 14. 14 comes in between these two lines, so I am going to cut along this line. This way I'm not fighting with the whole roll and I'm only cutting out what I need. Take your protective sheet off, place your vinyl color side up as carefully as you can. I like to take my brayer tool and smooth it out to try to get as many of the air pockets as I can out.
brush anything off. Remember to check your blade to make sure there is nothing on your blade. Place it back and clamp. Load your mat. Press the flashing arrow button, that's to load. And then press your Cricut button. Step four, weeding out the vinyl. Before I weed out my vinyl, I like to cut everything out so that I have less outside space to work on and it just makes it easier for me. If you have trouble being able to see the cutouts, you can always use your Cricut Lightbrite. For this particular one, I don't have any problems seeing the cutout. So I'm gonna go ahead and start weeding and I always start out with the center cuts or the inside cuts. That way when I cut out the, when I weed out the outside, I don't take the chance of messing up anything trying to get it out, trying to get the center pieces out. It just makes it easier, really and truly. Sometimes it's easier to start with the inside pieces. I also like to keep a pair of scissors on hand so I can cut as I need to. Just be careful that you're not cutting the actual vinyl, um, the lettering. And be careful when pulling your vinyl off that you don't rip your image or your words. Some pieces will come up and you just have to be very careful. If you feel like your vinyl is getting too big, cut it. Oh, I forgot to take out the B, the inside of the B. Be careful when you have, when you're working with the eyes, sometimes the dot over the eye does not want to peel with everything else. Weeding is probably one of the easier parts. Do the same process when you're working with these small names. Weed out the inside first. Remember, if you have a name that has an I in it or an apostrophe, those are going to be small. So you want to make sure that you're careful in taking those out. Make sure you peel the outside vinyl slowly. If you see a letter coming up with a vinyl, hold it down with your weeding tool. Until you have it all off. Repeat this process with each word, or in this case, phrase. Step five, attach the vinyl to the signs and the bunnies. Our next step will be to take our transfer sheet and use it to transfer, transfer the vinyl over to our signs. Lay my vinyl out. I like to grab a corner with my weeding tool to pull it up, peel it apart.
I'm going to go ahead and lay it down as I'm peeling. Missed part of it. When you miss part of it, if you very carefully, sometimes you can very carefully pull the transfer tape back off. And then line it back up. Use your scraper tool to make sure your vinyl is attached to the transfer tape. Peel it up, go to the back, scrape again. And now you want to peel up or peel the vinyl away from the backing. Make sure you don't go too terribly fast. That way you don't rip your vinyl. Because your transfer tape is clear, you can see exactly where you are placing your design. Put it where you want it. Use your scraper tool again. And then grab a corner and slowly walk it off or pull it back. If you see that your vinyl comes back up with it, use your scraper tool again. Remember to go slow so that you don't rip your vinyl. Put my transfer sheet on that paper on the backing and I just use my fingers to make sure that it's down. You can always seal this with Mod Podge and it is down. There might be a couple of bumpies. The signs, I got these from Dollar Tree. Repeat the same process with the next sign. This time you shouldn't need your weeding tool to detach the transfer paper. Scrape. Flip, scrape, fill it away. Remember, don't go too fast so that you don't rip your vinyl. Line it up. Smooth it out and use your scraper. Grab your corner and slowly peel it back. And just use your fingers to make sure that your vinyl is down. Push down on anything that feels like it's up or looks like it's up. On this side, because there are grooves, you can choose to cut the vinyl to go into the grooves. You can also choose, like the other one, you can choose to use Mod Podge to seal it down. And that's all there is to the signs. Now, the fun part. All these little words, or all these little names. But you're going to do the same concept. Put your transfer tape over the name. Use your scraper. Be careful that you don't mess up the name. 
There's not much to hold on to. Flip it. Scrape the back. Grab the corner. Very carefully start peeling it apart. Grab a bunny. Line up your name. You can choose to do it up high or you can choose to do it kind of in the center. I'm going to do mine somewhat in the center. Scrape. Walk it back. You can seal these with Mod Podge as well. Flip, scrape, pull apart, and attach. You can choose to try to keep your name straight. You can choose to turn it. This is really up to you how you want your name to go on your rabbit. Repeat the same process for every name. This is what I mean by be careful that you don't use scraper too hard. You don't rip the vinyl. You can unfold it and fix it. That is the importance of being very careful. And then you just place it back. Put the tape back over it. This time hold on to the tape. And don't be in a rush like I just was. Fill it back. If you're making more than one side like I am. You can either separate these as you go, or you can get them all done and then separate them. I'm going to get them all done and then separate them per uh, the side that they go to. And just repeat this process. Now that I have all of my names on my bunnies and on my signs, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of Mod Podge. I have the matte layer, the matte Mod Podge to seal it, shake it up. To apply the Mod Podge, I am going to use a foam brush because this is a type of glue. So this will go in the garbage when I'm done. When it dries, it will dry clear. So you won't be able to see the Mod Podge, but you still want an even layer. And this just helps the vinyl to stay down. Again, make sure, make sure that when you are using Mod Podge paint or anything like that, you want to make sure that you are in a well ventilated area. because of the fumes. Set them to the side to dry. Repeat the same process on the bunnies.
I'm only going to do it on the bottom part. And I'm not going to do it on the sides. I'm only going to apply this over the, the name area, the bottom half. Not really half, but the bottom part, the bottom circle, I guess is what you call it. The bottom part of the body. We'll just go with that. Repeat this process until you are, until you have them all completed. Step six, attach the bunnies to the sign. Now that everything has dried, we're going to attach our bunnies to our signs. As we do this, I found in my little stash of crafting supplies, these little, I was using them as gnome noses, and I thought they would make the cutest little uh, cottontail. I think it's what it's called, right? Cottontail for the bunnies. So, I added one to one to see what it looks like, and I think that's just really cute. So, I'm going to add one to the rest of them as well. As I'm doing this, we're going to be separating them because I'm going to use hot glue to add them. So, I'm going to separate them as to whose sign they go to. And I'm just going to put a little dot. Actually, I'm going to put the dot on the cotton ball and then attach the cotton ball to the bunny. And because it is hot glue, it really does not take long for it to drop to um, set. Try to get it as centered as you can. Can repeat this process with each bunny. You can also choose to add a bow or to put some rope or something string around the bunny to give it a little bit more decor if you want to. I was actually on the hunt for some bows, some Christmas looking bows. Not really Christmas, well, I guess they are Christmas looking, but they were also the um the red and the black checkered because I was going to add those, but I did not find them, but instead I found the little cotton tails. Now that we have them all separated and they all have their little cotton tail, we're going to work on one at a time. This is where you want to lay it out and decide how do you want these to lay out. It's going to need a little bit more room than that. So I'm going to slide this up. You can choose to separate them by each individual family, so to speak. I don't think I'm going to have enough room to do that. There's enough room that you can put seven rows. So now you just have to decide how do you want to do it. All right. That's somewhat how it's going to work out. There'll be some rows that'll be a little longer than others. Or I could even take these two and put them over here. And that'll give us the same amount so it'll hang down evenly. Now we need our string. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to glue your string onto the back. Decide which one's going to be the last one because that'll be the first one that goes on your string. And just put you a line of I was going to use E6000 as well. And you can, if you want, 100% up to you. Remember this hot glue is going to be just that hot. using the back of my nail to kind of push it down now I'm going to give it just a little bit I don't want it I don't want them touching each other like this I want to give them a little bit of space you to put another line straight down
just kind of try to push it into the hot glue. Repeat the process. I'm not going to take a bunch of hot glue. You don't have to drench it in the hot glue. Cut your string. You're going to take your sign. Put you a little bit, make sure I'm in the shot here. Put you a little bit of hot glue. You don't want it directly on it. You want to give it a little space. Cut the excess string off. And you can even add a little bit more if you want. Give it a second to dry. And there you have it. You're going to repeat the same process for each section or each row. And if I figured it up, you should have four. And remember, this is going to hang against the wall. So your bunnies won't be flipping and flopping like they are there. Repeat the process until you have them all on here. Once you have all of your bunnies on your strings, you can go ahead and start cutting the excess off the top, off the back of the sign. And if you need to add any more to your string, you just add a new piece of, or any more bunnies to your string. You just add a new piece of string onto the back of the last bunny and add however many you need. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope it inspired you to go out and make your own grandparent sign. You can even change it up because you can do the text in Cricut Design Space. Once you place your sign against the wall, you'll notice that your bunnies will start, they will turn to where they're all facing the front where you can see everybody's name. But if you don't like the fact that they are kind of turning before you put them on the wall or maybe you're not gonna put yours on the wall and you're just gonna let that free hang from somewhere, you can attach ribbon behind here and that should take care of the twisting. And like always, Remember to keep crafting your best life.